Thanks again for joining us on the program this morning on ITV as we go into our discussion segment. Of course, the heart of the program actually from now till about uh, 9 o'clock or thereabouts when we bring uh, the discussion segment to a full circle. But um, my colleague opened up uh, focus on the show this beautiful Monday morning. I mean, throughout the weekend, that was the issue that dominated national discourse. You find two men talking. You find young people talking. You find an, a, man, a man and a woman talking. Uh, probably that's the discussion. And amongst legal luminaries, I mean, we've been hearing of uh, uh, reactions and uh, not much of counter-reactions, really. But what is the issue that the Honorable Justice uh, Onoye will be arraigned before the Code of Conduct Tribunal over allegation of forced asset declaration or non-declaration of his assets. Well, there's been a couple of reactions in that regard, and many questions are coming up. All right, so uh, uh, the thrust of our discussion today is to look at all the issues surrounding these allegations, give legal interpretation to it, and then, of course, one question that has also been at the front burner is, uh, did the man actually do anything wrong? Did he violate the law by raising of these allegations against him? That's on the one hand. And people have also questioned the um, jet speed with which the report was written, the petition was written, investigated, and then, of course, a decision taken for the man to be arraigned. Well, we also look at that. But um, we are aware that this is not the first time such a thing will be happening in this country, considering the travails of the Honorable Justice Salami uh, some years back. But we'll fuse all of that together to make a meaning to you in the course of the discussion. I have with me in the studio Reverend Olu Martin. He's the Executive Director, Conversers of Democracy, and good governance. We're also expecting other panelists to join us, but Reverend Olu Martins is here. Many thanks for coming yeah. on the show. I'm trying to come for the <laughs> anyway, thank you again for your coming on the show and the corrections that you have made. Okay, uh, when this story uh, came up over the weekend, what immediately came to your mind? What immediately came to my mind uh, were some of the songs And then, because you are, I like to tell stories, so I'm a bit of a student of history. And um, so I am want to take it, first of all, from when the judiciary, when there seemed to be an onslaught on the judiciary, where in, at the wake of the morning, very early um, the, in the morning, we saw doors of judicial officers pulled out, pulled down over you know, perceived allegations of corruption. And there was no small to and cry over um, the, um, from the side of the public as to a seeming attempt by this same present administration, if you like to put it that way, to cow, to intimidate, and to embarrass the um, judiciary. Then if you look at the fact that penultimate when the person who held sway as the CJN at that time, I think it was Miriam, okay, no, the, um, the man after uh, Miriam um, retired from active service, one of them was appointed in acting capacity. And watchers of democracy and historians have said that was the first time we were having an acting CJN as far as that level of governance was concerned. And he wasn't, his appointment was not substantiated whilst it wasn't President Muhammad Buhari that substantiated his appointment, even though we can say it was the administration. But it was while President Yemi Oshu, acting President Yemi Oshu, was in office, that he 
was his appointment was substantiated. So you, you, you cannot help but to try and draw a correlation, a seeming conspiracy theory to say there's either somebody there or a group of persons who are not comfortable with what are not known as you know, CJM. If you decide for the first time to say, uh, for whatever reason, let's put this man in acting capacity. So if you now look at what has transpired, and then you look at the explanations of uh, Walter, you know, or not, these are these are a subsisting court ruling that says in very express terms that when a serving member of the judiciary is caught in a web of suspicion like this, the first thing I would expect that the matter would be presented to the NJC for action before, quote unquote, an external factor can look into the matter. Then if you now look at the plethora of petitions on the table of the Code of Conduct, uh, 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 both the Bureau and the Tribunal, Tribunal. if you look at the investigation, petitions that have been written against several people and the Attorney General of the Federation has not acted upon, you are not want us to say what there's an interest in an organ. What, what is very special about yes, this there one? There's an interest in this matter. Mm. Why does it look like there is because it is the same interest in Saraki's matter that is the same interest in water and organs matter? You now just look like there is a certain group of persons. Once they do not favor your emergence and against the odds you were met, Saraki is the head of the legislative arm of government. Walter Noga is the head of the judicial arm of government. President Muhammad Ubari is the head of the executive arm of government. Those three arm of government together form the federal government of you know, Nigeria, for which you cannot say the president in his supervisory role is the president of the federal republic of uh, you know, Nigeria. So this seeming frontal emasculation or invasion of um, this very statutory arms of government, we play together mm. to ensure uh, what we define as a democracy. Yeah, for what else of democracy, yeah, especially for those of us from the civil society angle, we're pretty worried okay. about it. All right, um, I've got uh, Naveel Obayadu joining us on the show this beautiful Monday morning. Naveel, many thanks for coming on the program TMI Monday. What? Well, looks you. like a regular for now me, for yeah. you now. You won't accuse me again of, of, of not inviting you. No, 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 I will accuse you. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, good to have you. Here. How was your weekend, by the way? Fine, thank you. Okay, just, now, uh, most analysts that have reacted to this issue have described it as an attack on the judiciary, which is supposed to be an arm of government by the executive uh, you don't subscribe to that, do you? This is um, a constitutional matter. It's a matter that has to do with uh, the promulgation of the National Assembly, which, has, which, is, which is an act. And when offenses are alleged to have been committed, one expects that we take a recourse to the existing constitutional provisions or the law. In the case of... Uh, Oluwoyo versus the state, 2014, as reported by Nigeria Weekly Law Report. The, the Supreme Court decided, like in other plethora of cases, mm. that for a case, a prima facie case, to be established against somebody, upon which the person can be put on trial or be brought before court, there must be one direct confessional statement by the person involved. There must be, uh, there could either be a circumstantial evidence or there is eyewitness evidence. So the court is bound to look at these three things. I'm talking about the court now. We are talking about the Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is uh, the number one legal officer of the country, okay. be involved in a criminal offense against the Nigerian state. The question then is, was there direct uh, uh, evidence from the person in question whether these offenses were committed? Or was there an eyewitness report? Or was there circumstantial evidence? By, by Friday last week, around 1.45 1 p.m., uh, an investigative team of the Code of Conduct Bureau 
visited the Chief Justice of Nigeria and obtained a statement from him where he admitted that he made a mistake by not declaring a part of this uh, assets, sundry assets, that are subject matter of a, a petition before the code of... That means he has admitted that he committed the offense. Now, after admitting that he has committed an offense, the next thing to follow is the procedure that is laid down by law for him to be brought to book. The question then is, has the procedure been followed? The answer is no. What is the provision? According to Section 3 of the, between Section 3 and Section 6 of the Code of Conduct for Judicial Officers, including the Chief Justice of the Federation, as revised in 2016, if a judicial officer in the course of carrying his duties is involved in any offense whatsoever yeah. that have to do with the discharge of his duties towards the judiciary and the nation, the first thing to do, the agency that is aware of that offense should bring it before the notice of the National Judicial Council. The National Judicial Council will now have to issue him a query. Then, if the query is not satisfactory and there is a premier fashion case established against such a judicial officer, yeah. the person will now be asked to stay away by way of suspension or interdiction, pending when that matter is dealt with by the relevant agency of government. Okay. If the person is found wanting, from there the person can either be given a soft lady of either compulsory retirement or the person will be dismissed. What I've said just now is captured in the judgment of the Court of Appeal. In the case of uh, Justice Ungajiwa versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as reported in 2017, the question is, as the Code of Conduct Bureau forgotten that there's such a judgment, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, mm. has he forgotten that there's such a judgment? If they are forgotten, now that this matter is, is now in the tribunal, Code of Conduct Tribunal, and it's also a public uh, a domain. domain yeah. I feel they will not have to go and abide by that regulation or by that law. Okay. Failure to do so, we portray Nigeria in the international community as a laughing stock, especially now that elections are around the corner. Mm. And the opposition is saying that the government of President Mohamed Buhari is looking for a chief justice of Nigeria, in quote that we rig election or that we stamp the election they want to ring mm. in their favor mm. time shall tell if but that is if that is true yeah okay. time shall tell if okay. that is the truth okay we'll know okay but from the analysis just now mm -hmm. uh justice onoga the chief justice of the federal republic of nigeria has admitted that he made mistake in his declaration of assets number one number two Another interesting aspect of it is that we, we, had, we have had the opportunity of discussing either in the public, maybe by newspaper stand, I would rather drink beer, maybe beer palace discussion, <clears throat> a lot of the road discussion, sometimes on television like this. People who are saddled with uh, a responsibility should carry out their responsibility. In 2011, Justice Onoge, as a, as a judge of the Supreme Court, he declared his assets, 2011. And the law says that this declaration of assets shall be for a period of every four years. Four years. If somebody declares assets in 2014, in 2011, the next declaration is supposed to be 2015. Yeah. I have checked everything that they have been arguing about this matter. I did not see where they talk about 2015 declaration. Where was the Code of Conduct Bureau at that time? Is this that the Code of Conduct Bureau official, they are not aware that a highly placed officer such as the Chief Justice of the, did yeah. not declare assets yeah. so that they can make him to declare the assets, either by filing writ of murder and all those other things, they fail to do so. So it shows that uh, even I don't want to I don't want to totally yes, I don't want to totally intent. align myself with okay. the okay. with the let me let me pursue that. Let me pursue uh, there. Of, uh, let me pursue there. Yeah. Uh, if you just join us, it's the TMI Monday. Uh, the analysis this morning. 
is on the arraignment of the Chief Justice of Nigeria before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. I mean, some uh, very sound perspectives given already by our two panelists here, but we'll add a third one so we can have more varieties of opinions uh, as the case may be, because as they say, variety indeed is the spice of life. Join us again on TMI after this short break. TMI, every opinion counts. Some fundamental statements there. Nobody does it like the late Archbishop. Hit the nail on the head. Articulate all the issues in, in just one piece. You appreciate what he's talking about. And to think that that's, those statements came out some donkey years back and they are still relevant till tomorrow. It shows that uh, something needs to be done to really put this country on the trajectory for us to move to where we ought to be. We've got the president of Network of Civil Society Organization, Barrister Abraham Oviawi, joining us. Barrister Abraham Oviawi, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. <coughs> let, let, let me get you involved at this time. Uh, what is going on, I mean, against the background of the foundation established, both here and in the public domain, particularly from legal luminaries? Yes. Is this also tantamount to what <laughs> some have described as media trial? I, I concede very strongly that what apparently is happening to the CJ and the teachers of Nigeria, it's a blackmail, and I see it as a media trial. The whole idea behind all this is to coerce him and possibly expose him to ridicule and odium in order for them to achieve their target. And I ask very strongly, the arguments have been everywhere. The, the, the case laws on the strength as to procedural engagement before such step have been taken has been everywhere. Even the layman on the streets even knows the case law that before you can try a judicial officer, make no mistakes about it, the CJN is the head of an arm of government. Just like you have the president being, being, being the head of the executive arm and the Senate president being the head of the legislature. And quite interestingly, it is only the judicial arm of government that the Constitution has specially provided an institution for which discipline and engagement with respect to judicial officers, don't also for, 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 for forget that the judiciary seems to be the last hope. Whatever the actions of the legislature and the executive are radically reviewed and interpreted. If the, if the legislature makes law, Whatever the content of that law, the impression they intend to create or the message they intend to pass by that law, are interpreted by the judiciary. The executive act in a manner that are inconsistent with public conscience, it behoves on the judiciary to do that. The judiciary is one of the most powerful arms of government in any country and anywhere in the world. Therefore, it is not out of place or it is not a misnomer that that same law, the constitution, particularly as we run a constitutional democracy, have created the agency as a council for which issues touching on judicial officer, which is an independent arm of government, must follow through that agency. And again, that has been giving judicial blessings in the, in, in the court of decision of and, 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 and FRON. And to my mind, it's expected that if the federal government intend to act in a manner it has acted, it must follow due process. Make no mistakes about it. If a petition was written on the 7th, and they summoned courage to submit that petition on the 9th, and by on the 10th, you are already seeing charges flying everywhere and service to the city. And, 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 and by on the 14th, who <laughs> wait is this morning, they are, he is said to have been arraigned. And my argument is very simple. Why don't exact that uh, 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 energy for which you have sent that petition to the Code of Conduct Bureau? And I expect the Code of Conduct Shatipona, if confronted with this matter this morning, to wash its hand away from that child like Pontius Pilate and direct them to go and meet the NJC on the strength of jurisdiction. And let me say very strongly that the judicial arm of government will not be blackmailed into making the CJN to step down as the citizens of Nigeria because we run a system where our criminal jurisprudence believe very strongly in the presumption of innocence. We run an 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 to 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 that system of, of, of adjudication where there is a presumption of innocence 
as against the presumption of guilt that you find in other uh, 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 jurisdictions. Just to say very strongly that whatever the and to make no mistakes about it, have the code of conduct bureau played their role as individual upon the assumption of office officer CJN or, 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 or of justice or, or not and served him the code of conduct forms for, for which he ought to have filed. He said, he, he, and he didn't do that. And he lays it to my co-panelists who, 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 who can pass very strongly that the last time the, the, it was filed was in 2015, 2011. And by 2015, he was not served with any form for which he should renew whatever declaration he has made. Mm. And he said by 2016, when he was made acting CJN, he realized that there were mistakes in what he filed in 2011. And as such, he decided to, 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 to ordinarily correct it. He didn't include those accounts for, for which they are alleged because at the time of 2011, when he filed, when there was an error in his filing, those accounts were not yet open. Mm. And as such, he behoves on them. But unfortunately, when he became CCJN, he didn't file. Apparently, maybe possibly the reforms were not served on him. To my mind, he has made his own proposition. <laughs> I expect the petitioners who follow the procedure as required by the Constitution to the end, JC, for, 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 for which the the the, the CJN, even though being chairman of the NJC, have a duty to step down, pursuant to the pillars of natural justice, or the Otere Patem and Nemo Judas in Kosaswa. I want to say very strongly that the CJN must rise above board at this critical time. I am concerned about the haste with which they intend to present the CJN before the Code of Conduct Tribunal. In less than three, four days, and I challenge, and I challenge government as it were, and even the entire system of government, to see to what extent other criminal charges with no plethora of petitions okay. that are pending in the various agencies for yeah. which yeah. nobody has even been called, let alone a, a, a family in charge. We'll, we'll get, get, get to that point by the time. Yeah. Blackmail yeah. into this arrangement, yeah. and if they feel they have a strong case against the CJN. I am not against fight, fight against corruption. Yeah. I am concerned about the procedure for which our laws, because we run a constitutional democracy, okay. for which our grown norm has provided before such steps can indeed be taken. Okay, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well spoken, uh, Barista Ibrahim of Yahweh, with so much energy. <laughs> uh, we have to stop you so you don't uh, go off track and <laughs> stay on course. Um, Reverend Ulu Martins, we are here now. What options are available against the background that, in the course of the analysis, has been established both here and outside the, the public domain that due process was not followed in uh, prosecuting this matter as it were? What options are available and what is the implication? The opposition party is already saying, just like uh, Neville alluded to a while ago, that this is a scheme by the ruling party to emasculate the judiciary and make it ready to do their bidding in the event of the aftermath of the 2019 elections. Thank you very much. Um, it was Patrick Henry that said that the difference between criminals and government is that it is the law that differentiates between a criminal and a government. Because the moment a government acts outside the prescriptions of Constitution and the law, there is no difference between the criminal and the government. As a matter of fact, what you will not have outside the law and government is that you have a legitimate criminal. Because what it means what it means that government now becomes a criminal by not acting outside the law. You can imagine if police doesn't act outside the law. <laughs> or the police act outside the law with the guns that they have. Yeah. What, they are, what has now happened is that we will not have a police force that has become a legitimate uh, arm robber, you know, on the road. And, and unfortunately, it is like Wale Shoyinka said, this government appears to be um, committing unforced errors. Because these are things that ordinarily, if you had sound advisors, there are certain ways you will not go. For instance, the DSS wrote a damning report um, just immediately after the APC um, Congress, where it accused the APC chairman of collecting gratis to the tune of about $58 million dollars. It was the DSS that reports to the presidency that wrote that statement. As I talk to you now, nothing has come out of it. On two occasions, 
Rallies have been held, protests have been held in front of the ultra modern hospital in Benin City. Nothing has been done, you know, with regards to that uh, matter. And then, if you now look, so to speak, I listened to the chairman of IPAC, uh, Inter Party Advisory Council, with regards to the statement of Mahmoud Yakubu, and how Mahmoud Yakubu was saying that there are these recent guidelines of INEC were cast in stone, and that there was no way they were going to shift grounds on it. And ordinarily, it's that document should be a multi stakeholder impute. The IPAC, all most of the parties are saying that they didn't have input into that document. Mm. And the INEC chairman is saying that you know what? No going back. Yes, on Aburi we stand. If you and then on the 15th of January, or, on, uh, early January this year, the IG of police officially retired from uh, service, and the man is kept. Because I hear people now asking that uh, Onoge should uh, uh, resign. The IG that re that officially retired is kept, is kept is kept there. Somebody who is is supposed to be presumed innocent is now we are now asking to resign. And then we are worried because we are told that the next person after what okay, is a northerner. If you look at what happened with the DSS, we say if I where say if I still had a few more six months to go, why don't you allow him? Yeah. The man, yeah, the man was moved out and then a northerner. No matter the explanation that you are, that you allude to this thing, mm. you create an impression that you want to capture Nigeria. And if you hear the language of politicians, it looks like you want to capture Nigeria and conquer the territory, so that if in the event the elections appear at the general at plenary when we go to vote, do not favor you, it is the responsibility of judiciary to set up uh, to set up uh, tribunals. And Walter or not them, by the way he's been going, appeared to be doing the right thing as far as judiciary is concerned. Take what happened recently in Rivers in River State. For which some people are perceiving that that may have hit certain quarters where the judiciary pronounced that all of the primaries held in River State were not avoid, were illegal because there was a subsisting case. So it looks like the man is saying, you know what, let us do this thing the way that it ought to be done. And some people are not happy about it. With regards to the just now election, because these elections are critical. They are critical because the stakes are very high. And the whole world, you know, is watching. And there appears to be a script that somebody is playing. Because they say, when you see the bear dancing on the street, <laughs> clearly that the man who is playing the drums is somewhere around the corner. All of what is happening here, to my own, and that is my opinion, is that it is sequence, it's an arrangement to ensure that the government of the day, if per adventure the elections do not go and we are able to skew the process, you have a judiciary that you would, would have also been willing in, in, in line to ensure that the hold on power is sustained. However, it's that, like uh, Chino Achibe wrote, if the bird, if the hunter says I will shoot without missing, the bird says I will fly without fetching. You see, these gadgets that we hold has made the whole world a community. So like Neville said, the international community is watching. Because elections cannot be free and fair by one aspect of, by one of the players. The ruling party cannot see elections to be free and fair. Because in all of this that has happened, both with Mahmoud Yakubu, the ruling party hasn't kicked against anything that has happened in that regard. So it looks like it is script that somebody, you know, is acting. However, is that it is only your part because the problem with crime or focus on the crime is that it creates blindness. If you want to go and steal a pot of meat in the pot, your own focus is how do I get my hand in the pot? And remove the meat. Whether well, somebody is watching you from a from a pigeon hole, you don't no. know. It's creating so for you now you're looking at the fact how do I how do we hijack all the processes and make sure that we remain in office. The actions and inactions of certain other dramatic personnel who are involved in this election are unknown to you. So the signs are ominous. Even to those who are sentimental towards this administration, they also have their reservations and it also drums support to that singular fact that it looks like there is a group of people looking like, like Nebu said, at the general of the Federation, sir, he's a senior advocate of Nigeria. He didn't ask senior for nothing. 
It means that you ought to know all of the options that is available, you know, to you. If you goof, it means that you are not fit, you know, for that, uh, you know, office. I've listened to uh, a couple of persons. I even listened to Femi Fallon, who ordinarily you would have considered as a friend of uh, the ruling party. Yeah, the ruling party. But on this particular matter, the man is kicking against it because the moment you emasculate the judiciary, there is no point in the president of that nation anyway yeah, yeah. to wear a badder anymore. If you don't wear suits because you don't have a judiciary, what once you don't have a judiciary and you have called the National Assembly, what we have is a if there's any sort thing, is a democratic militocracy, yeah, which doesn't all go well okay. for a thriving democracy like our own. All right, uh, Neville, you've been uh, listening patiently uh, and in your tradition, um, taking notes. Um, of course, uh, I want to know what those notes are, but in addition, <laughs> in addition, uh, is it about the timing of this matter that is of greatest concern to you? There, there's no issue with the timing. There's no issue with the timing. It's just that when issues that have to do with uh, national security, national integration, they are brought to the fore. People tend to express sentiments. People tend to either stand for government, stand against, and people try to whip up uh, ethnic uh, sentiment, as the case may be. I listened carefully to Olumati just now and to other persons who have spoken on this matter that uh, President Mohamed Bouhari never wanted to forward the name of uh, Justice uh, Water and get to the National Assembly to be confirmed as a substantive uh, CJN. Chief Justice of Nigeria. That was the news. Then Providence added that the President was not around and the person he transmitted his power to now forwarded the name. And the man is Chief Justice of Nigeria. Ordinarily, I expected Justice Walter Onoge to know that there were persons, powers, that never wanted him to be Chief Justice of Nigeria. And that he was a victim of high wired politics, that is, politics of North and South. But he played to the gallery. When I say play to the guy, I will just give an instance just now. In the case of uh, Adetoba Ubu and the University of Ilori, that uh, lecturer was given a scholarship opportunity to go to Germany. Ordinarily, he was supposed to allow the university to approve his exit. But he just submitted the application and went to Germany. Because according to him, uh, there was a deadline he must meet. And while he was away, he was issued query. No reply because it was not a grant to reply the query. Later, they gave him warning, later suspension, later termination of appointment. Then his friend now went to court on his behalf in his name. And he vehemently argued before court, pleaded before court that, but because his head of department was not happy with him, that he was uh, progressing. That was why he put a machinery place to get him out, of the, out of the system. But the court of appeal in delivering judgment on that matter, he said that since he knew that his head of department was not happy with him, he should not have played into his, into, hand. into his hands. I only for him to come to court and say, my HUD wanted me out of this place. Now, I expected the chief justice of the, of the nation, when he knew that it was required of him to declare asset, and the, and the form was not served on him, he also has advisors around him, people who advise. He has lawyers, intelligent young lawyers, who are helping him to do one or two things. So help me to draft a letter to Code of Code Bureau, demanding for a form, because I know they can lay a bush for me here. He failed to do so. And now he has even admitted that he made a mistake. He is now at the mercy of the president. Even though the procedure, I have, I have argued that the procedure is not followed according to the judgment of a uh, superior court. That procedure needs to be followed. And it is not the mercy of the president. The president can just now maybe as a result of pressure from people, let us leave the chief justice to be there. Otherwise, the offense that he has committed, that offense, even if the procedure is followed, the offense will still be established against him. 
Hmm. Because he has admitted. Okay. That's not conclusive. Yes. Okay. Wait, wait. When okay. I say when I've said the offense is going, is going to be if the process is followed, mm -hmm. the offense will still be established against him. A man who has who, who has written that I made a mistake. That I made a mistake. At what point are you now I realizing that you made a mistake? Did you write to a code of code of bureau to say you made a mistake? We, upon we, that that document that I written to them will not be your defense. Okay. You didn't write to them. Until somebody has written a petition detailing your account numbers and the money that uh, you transacted with the banks that you did not disclose earlier and that your two your two uh, 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 your two affidavits and the funds we, uh, we uh, for 2014 and 2016 we were submitted the same day and the person who, who, who received them from you they are all evidence against you so even though i'm not the i'm not the chairman of the code of court uh, tribunal, uh, tribunal. Mm. and i know that uh, based on uh, based on on legal rules the chairman of the tribunal we we decline the resolution over that matter but the matter can only be settled just now politically okay if we follow due process okay the uh, cgm the, the cgm will still oh. going for it okay but let me quickly react to some of the issues that uh uh well, uh, raised. Raised. I thought you had done that a no, while ago. No, 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 I thought you no, had done no. that a while ago. There were particular one that he made mention of. <laughs> he talked about the Inspector General of Police. Yes. And I say that when we are talking on television like this, people who are watching us at home. Some of them they have more information than we have. And so what are, is the point? What is the point you yeah, have to make? The point yeah. I want to make yes. is that the 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 power to appoint a president, a, 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 an Inspector General of Police, is a constitutional power of the president and commander in chief. The power to extend the tenure of the of the Inspector General of Police is power that that rests constitutionally with the president. Mm. And the president yeah. has exercised that his power to to extend the tenure of the Inspector General of Police mm. in line with section 215, subsection one and two of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And I've had the opportunity of asking questions. That before now, from 1999 to date, we have had presidents. We have had the Lucia Gopas on of PDP. We have had uh, Yaradwa of PDP. We had Gulok uh, Ibele Jonathan of PDP. Now we now have uh, Mohamed Buhari of PDP. Is of there any yeah, of APC, I beg your pardon. Is there any president among these three presidents of uh, of uh, PDP that has extended the tenure of the Inspector General of Police? The answer is yes, capital yes. And I will give example just now. The president, the government of President Lucia Gopas on Extended the tenure of uh, Sunday Hidero in this country in exercise of the constitutional powers. Yara Dras go, you, you, Jonathan government, they extended the tenure of, uh, of uh, IGP Mike Obama Okiro in this same Nigeria. And all the people who are now uh, saying that the president is, uh, is extending the tenure of the president, even when those people were supposed to retire from the police force. Where were they that time? Okay. Why did they go to court to say, okay. Mr. Okay. So President, you're saying that you're saying there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with because that. The because the yes, the past are the power. Of if the anybody president. is saying that the president was not supposed to exercise such power, court. the president should go to court so okay. that we can punish the president of such power. All right, let's number two, number two. No, no, I'll come back to you. No, no, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you, Levi. You had some reservation about some of the things that he said about the the case involving the CGN, and then of course the role of the NGC ultimately uh, inducting the CGN. We know the NGC, the chairman of the NGC, is the chief justice of Niger. What are your thoughts, yeah? Just to say very strongly that it is not enough to speculate what the outcome of the NGC would be. If the CGN have said, in law, there is what we call honest mistake. It's a defense to criminal liability. Our laws, our criminal jurisprudence, honest mistake is a defense to criminal liability. And if you might have said, my code of conduct form for 20, auto form for 2011, I omitted certain details. And having been made acting CJN, I sought the need to cover those errors which were in that of 2011. And he did that without being prompted. But unfortunately, I was under the impression that having done that correction in 2016, it will elapse in 2020, and there will be no need for me to not do anyone at this time. Leave it for the judiciary to interpret whether that suits their belly for which 
they can uphold as being fine. You cannot speculate what their reasoning would be. The laws are there. It lies on the belly and the breast of the judicial arm to interpret what they mean. Like Oliver when the home says, he said, laws are the prophecies of what the court will do and nothing more pretentious and what are laws. So it is what the prophecies of the judicial arm will do on this matter that amounts to law and not the speculations we get from individuals here and here. But I want to say very strongly that I am not really concerned about whether or not it took three or four days to do the petition and X, Y, Z. If it is possible to get it done, let that system also run in favor of other individuals who have their matters pending everywhere. Simple. Because one of the challenges of legal processes in this country is delay. And if the system can run so quick, then it is a good one for us. But just to say very strongly that there have been a pattern in the way and manner this current federal government has done its activity. And my brother cited very copiously the DSS situation where a northerner was there. And the, 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 the acting president, who is the current vice president, saw the need to ease him out on the strength of actions taken in the National Assembly. And he behoves on the tie of a southerner. The president came, now stand him out for another, no, 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 no. We saw the challenges for which the current CJN confronted himself with. There is a timeline of six months for which he can be acting CJN. It elapsed. The NJC had to go back to renew that mandate of six because they were waiting for the president. Like it already said, as divine providence will have it, as providence will have it. It behoves on the seats of the acting president, who, who is a senior advocate of Nigeria. There was a duty on him. He could not have come back to explain to an arm which he is part of. And he, he, he actually sent his name to the National Assembly, and the approval went who Klein and Sinker. Just to say that, like I actually said, the CJN had not been in the good books with the of respect of the current federal go -go government. That had bedeviled very clearly the way and manner okay. it ought to have been confirmed. Okay. Just to say that, let's not speculate of that he, he what said... What would be the eventual yeah. outcome he has of the NJC? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He has advanced his defense. He has advanced his defense. The president for what the NJC will say... That's the mercy of the president. Exactly. That, 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 that is the reason that, that, that uh, the office of the CJ... This is the National Assembly. the mercy of the process, not the president. This is the National Assembly that will determine whether a CJ can be removed. Okay, we'll come to that. No, no, we'll, 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 we'll come to that. We'll come, we'll come to that, gentlemen, in a moment. If you just join us, it's still TMI Monday, uh, looking at the arraignment of the CGN by the Code of Conduct Tribunal. Uh, of course, reactions <laughs> have been uh, coming up, just like we're having in the studio, and I'm sure that in the days to come, uh, these reactions will grow in leaps and bounds. But at this just diversionary, as some will say, I mean, if you've been to uh, the school, uh, university, you have GST 101, we used to learn that uh, back then in school, that uh, government has a strategy of diverting the attention of uh, the people from the core issues. Is this, is this one of them? We'll find out when we return on the show, TMI Monday, as we ask uh, Comrade Morrison or Guam Bovia to join this conversation. Don't go away.